evening all. Um, today we are going to go through a load of pickups we've had recently because we went to Bridgewater in Somerset, which is a gold mine, a gold mine of games and arcades. So, it was last weekend now, wasn't it? Yeah, it was actually. It was Saturday. Saturday. Uh, we went down with, I think it was nine of us. There's a nice picture of us on yeah. uh, Twitter. And we went to Time Warp Arcade, which is amazing. We go there once or twice a year. And we went to Insane Games and I just took yeah. my wallet out, threw my credit card at him and said, I never want to yeah. see that again. Because I think everyone else wanted more kind of like the arcade aspect of it, didn't they? Yeah. And we were kind of looking for... Um, uh, Games. You know, as well <laughs> as that. Yeah. So there's two things we always go to, isn't there? There's Insane Games and... Um, I think it's called Entertainment Zone. Yes, Entertainment Zone. Is that right? Yeah. I always want to say that's entertainment, but uh, he's got this, it's like a, a kind of a like really a thrift cool shoppy sort of thing, isn't it? Like, do you a deal? He's just a really cool guy. Although he was ill when we went down yeah. on Saturday. Um, and we always we always both third time we've been there now, isn't it? Yeah. And every time we go to um, the entertainment zone, we, we've always picked up like a really quirky kind of accessory for a games console or. Something they get seduced by the weirdness yes. in there, basically. Well, the last time we bought a GX4000, which is up there, so um, burning rubber, the home entertainment system, the um, Amstrad, um, and there's only got about 12 to 15 games on it, maybe even less than 22 that. popped into my head. Then could even be that could be wrong, games. it just popped into my head. It's got a limited number of games anyway, but it's really cool to, to own something like that boxed, and even then, that was like what 35 pounds, something like that. Yeah, yeah, was, he knocked off like 20 quid straight away, which happened again. Well, well the thing we picked up, the key thing, we'll, we'll wait till last, because it yeah. ties in with, we got a bit of a deal. I did nearly pick up a VIC-20, but the box was so big. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like very, a two-hour train journey. Very long. Kind of having a few drinks with a load of friends. We didn't want to just have this enormous yeah. box. To and we hadn't even gone to the arcade yet then, have we? <laughs> <laughs> you literally went to link to buy loads of games. We had to, because that one shop was closing because the guy was ill, and then... Um, mm. You know, we were late and we thought we missed the train. I get, I get too excited. We missed the train. Irritating, but I get, we're there and everyone's like, right, let's go to the arcade and have a few drinks and you know, play commando and stuff. And I, I can't help but think, I need to have two massive bags full of games on me before I feel sated. Yeah. And then it's like, right, if they shut, it's fine. And fair play, he always keeps them behind in time of arcade. He always keeps them behind his counter. Yeah, really. Probably cool a bit games. of an inconvenience for him, really, because obviously he. <laughs> Yeah. The two big bags of games. <laughs> yeah, massive, massive counters, bags. Isn't it? So. But they're um they run by the same people, so they they're both cool. So hurtling into the pickups then. I yes. this is in no particular order, we just sort of pile this up. Um but I picked up quite boring thing, only for a fiver, but I there was a few boring but is they had a few cool third party ones there. Is because I remember my friend um having this when we were kids. Yeah. So and it was it was the nicest one. You know when you pick them up, give them a squeeze. Yeah. So on the click in. I can finally play Cybernator again. Um. This one I picked up from. I think I picked up from the Time Warp Arcade itself because he's got okay. a few shelves, isn't he, of games that he they sell there, which is really cool. So again, we'd finished. Um, and this arcade as well is also uh, run by. Um, a couple of members from Insane Games, the game shop that's yeah. in Bridgewater. So they've obviously got some of the uh, overstock sort of Yeah, they so after we've been to Insane Games and spent all that money we were like, Oh, let's go shopping in uh, the yeah, arcade. Now. A little, little stand in the corner. It's but quite a good idea though, because yeah, it worked for me. Whenever we go there we pick up something. But anyway, um I picked up um Space Invaders for classic. PlayStation One. Is a classic. And one we really don't have, so that's quite cool. It was only a few quid, um, and well, we've kind of expanded on a PS1 collection recently. I mean, we've got quite, as you will see in the pickup video. I, I think there was there was no theme for this. Like, the prices are so good in there, like just half eBay prices. That if I see anything, no matter how kind of a little bit like you know, like even if it's just a sports game, they're so cheap. I just think, well. The Amiga games. Yeah, you know, I love pound, the Amiga games. a couple of pounds here and there, I mean. Should we take it in turns? Go on then. Well, I'll go with a really exciting one. I'll go with World Cricket um, on the on the Amiga. 
Uh, of course, there's a Cricket World Cup going on at the moment, or was going on, and you know, they keep them in there, keep them in little bags. And it's just one of those things, it's a quid. And I'm not going to leave an Amiga game box for a quid anyway. Yeah. I'll tell you that for free. They don't have a yeah, I guess, because the floppies tend to I'm self assuming they test them. We've never had any problems Think with positive. any... Think positive, it does work. We've never had any problems with anything bought from the same game. Okay, so... This is... It's actually got the price sticker still on it. Right, that was a good deal anyway, is... Tasmanian Devil Munchin Madness for the Game Boy Colour. I mean, I've never played that. Uh, this is from 1999. Um, but I, I do, I'm quite a fan of some of the um, Looney Tunes um, games, especially Taz on the SNES. You love that game. Is that what you're running up the screen? Yeah. I think everyone I think hates it apart from you. But I think it's a bit, bit more um, nostalgic for it because I remember playing it with, uh, with my brother. So because he had a snares and I'd play that with him. But it was really, really addictive. But you go along, collect back up a soda, and this is different, it's like a top-down kind of almost Zelda-type Zelda game it looks. That's what attracted me to it, because look. Oh, it's like an isometric Yeah. Thing. So if you look at the back... Oh, you put it, I don't know if you can see it. It's on the big screen, it'll be fine. Yeah, um, really cool. Again, a few quid, I was happy. Um, and then moving on, I picked up two uh, PSP games, which are again really cheap at the moment. I don't actually know what this one's called. Kazook? Yeah. Uh, Kazook and Twisted Metal, um, because Twisted Metal is. I'd like to get them all, um, although they've aged really badly, the Twisted Metal games. Yeah. I haven't played this one, and um, and Kazook just looked really cool because it's a minigame collection. And uh, there's one called Hot Pixel on the PSP with minigames, which is amazing. Middling reviews, amazing minigames. And it's kind of like the Wario way stuff. Oh, wow. And I love those kinds of games, so I'm not going to turn that down. Again, they're like really cool. £1.15, three quid. It's happening. And a fun party game. Yeah. On a PSP, everyone crowded round. <laughs> that little tiny screen. <laughs> <laughs> um, another one uh, picked up from Insane Games. Uh, list, like, for three quid. Box instructions, the game's fine, the box is quite condition, nice yeah. condition. Where's this? If you can see there, this is uh, Muppets in Spy Muppets License to Croak. I feel like I had to get works. that because it's like a James Bond thing, like Jim, you know. Yeah, it kind of, yeah, this it kind of works. Not like I'm a massive James Bond fan, although I appreciate the, Although Timothy Dalton yeah. is the best Bond, yes, yes. <laughs> um, I just thought it'd be quite a fun game. And again, it's Jim Henson. The Muppet, how can you not pick up that for three stuff quid? Like when it's a few quid, like Muppet games and Looney Tunes, you just can't, I can't leave them there. And again, it looks quite fun on the back. You fight against evil villains, such as Piggy Yellow and Dr. Nose. Piggy Yellow. And appearances by over ten of your favourite Muppet characters. I just thought that was really cool, to be honest. A few I'll, quid. I'll go through these pretty quickly. These are all like um, like one, two, three quid each. But uh, this is yeah, you picked up. I picked. Yeah, I just went because I love the Amiga. I can't leave Amiga games there. This is Lynx Golf, which I've got on about three other systems. But one day I'm going to get do like a, a massive 15 hour video on every golf game we own. Um, so yeah, just quickly because they're not particularly exciting, but I have to have them. Lynx Golf Touring Car Racer. Uh, the graphics. Look at the logo on the back. A hand-drawn snake and what appears to be just like ha like really basic but public domain S graphics is happening. You've got two pounds for a piece of history right there. So. Don't two two. Oh, and then Archer McLean's pool. I mean, come on, everyone's gonna have Archer McLean's pool. I think I've got this loose three quid, but um, it the copper we've got isn't working, and I love this game. And then finally, uh, and I am trying to collect these because. I think I bought you Shark one, you just go, one didn't day. I? Yeah, the fun school games. Quid each. Um, we've got about three or four of these, and I, I would like to get them all, because I remember playing them when I was a kid. Yeah. I don't think they are. We're learning things, educational games, so we'll just it. This, again, was picked up from the arcade. It was £4. And I just frowned at the camera then, sorry. Just checking <laughs> how much time was left. Are you angry <laughs> at me? Because I picked her up. Um, yep. Give the manual is the platinum, 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 platinum. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe we haven't got Tekken Two, and it's one of my favourite series of fighting games. So and it's Tekken Two. Yeah, <laughs> is it the best one? I think so. Yeah. So Tekken Two, classic. I might have stood on the Game Boy Advance license to Coke then. Well, the box is knackered now, isn't it? And then I grabbed Colony Wars, um, which I thought was G Police Two. I don't think it is, but either way, I like this and G Police, so. I don't think it is G Police 2. 
Okay. But two quid, pristine condition, heavy. You can knock some out with it. <laughs> okay, brace yourselves for a Midas title. <laughs> Anyone you, knows you. Midas games? And what's the other ones? Midas and... Uh, LJN. No, there's one begins with pre. Prism? No. Prism? Yeah, I think it might be Prism, yeah. So we, we, I don't know if we, we didn't make a point of collecting these, but I think we've sort of started doing it for the PlayStation 1 because we've got quite a lot of titles. I think we've got like a Hercules one. There's an Aladdin one, isn't um, it? We've Aladdin got quite a few in the, the PS2. Oh, are they, they, really they made us on the PS2? We, you know, there's that Snow White one which we don't have class very rare and quite hard to get hold of. But we do have like... Um, yeah, quite it's a few. Just basically like do a little video on the match, plays you know? on public domain things like um, Snow White and the Seven Doors and things. Not so, you know, I mean that kind and of thing. Like the fairy tales, quite, they're yeah. not Disney. Crap. So anyway, this is the Midas version of, <laughs> of Anastasia, the Russian princess. Which I is mean, I'm to the back a bit. That's there, really you know. cool. That's Look it. at that. Um, you want to play that, don't you? I'll give you a cheeky look at the back as well. <laughs> cheeky look a little peep at the back. Oh, well, you need to... Yeah, see, other titles available. Goldie, Lion and the King, Lord of the Jungle, Moses, Prince of Egypt, Nice Cats, The Dalmatians, and The Sword of Camelot. We've got all those. I know we've got... Um... Yeah, you're looking at the PS2 section there. Yeah, we've got Lion and the King. We've got quite a few of those, and we should do a video on them soon. If you have to describe them all in one word, what would it be? Rubbish. <laughs> Um, again, a pound though for an it's absolutely rubbish it's game. Happening. Yeah, what could go wrong? Hours of fun. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll quickly go through some of these because you know nothing exciting, but just ones we haven't got. And sometimes, even if they look, they're obviously budget titles when they're like a quid or two each. I just, even if I play them for like twenty minutes, I feel like I got my quids worth. You know, you yeah. pay more than that in arcade. So Dodger Marina, uh, don't know much about that. Kind of looks like a bit of a sort of. Um, uh, I've forgotten what the game is called, the N64 now, but kind of a wipeout y sort of thing. Um, Kotobuki Grand Prix, which looks like an anime kind of Mario Kart thing. Those things never really worked that well on the PS1 just because of the um, clashing of polygons. Um, oh, another Midas title. Oh, I didn't okay, realise. Yeah. Hybrid. I know the price sticker is over the alien on the cover, but... I remember you saying about that. No, I think but... HR Geiger might have something to say about that design of an alien. I don't know if you can see it there. Who do you reckon that is? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hybrid. It looks quite, it looks alright actually. Oh it's a oh it's a first person shooter. The fact is minus as well, you have to pick it. And another classic from which and this is generally a good game, um Urban Chaos. Two games called Urban Chaos. This on the PS1 and there's one on the PS2. Right and they're the both fire? I think it might be actually because it's one where you're actually like a fireman and you've got like a shield and, a, and an axe or something. It's really good. But this was really tasty. It's probably not aged very well. Mate, the guy in it is called Roper and I used to think that was a really cool name. Still do. Mm, name me your child Roper. Mm. <laughs> and I kind of thought, right, do you know what? That's it for me um, because I'd made quite a large purchase from um, the other store in the entertainment zone. Um, I wasn't, I'd say it was a large purchase, it wasn't a really it expensive. It was a physically but, large purchase. Yeah, I bought two things. So this is the last one. Star Gladiator, Episode 1, The Final Crusade. Cap episode 1, The Final uh, Crusade. Capcom. I'm just assuming there'll be more episodes because it's going to sell so well. Oh, Capcom! Yeah. Hmm. But £3, why not? What did I want? Yeah, I've not played that, but it just looked quite interesting. Oh, it's a one-on-one -on -one fighter. Episode 1, Final Crusade. Make sure you want to play it by looking out on the back. I don't think there's an episode 2. And this is all you now, the PS2 and Xbox. Um, the Suffering Ties That Bind, just because I do like horror games, and I'm sure my brother loved this, and I've never played it. And also, the guy in the front looks a little bit like Wolverine. That's all I needed. Yeah, that's really. cool, actually. Um, <clears throat> Lollipop Chainsaw, I picked up for you. Suda51, who did, I think it's called Killer7. Um, this is one that you, when it first came out, you said, oh, we have to get that. Yeah. And then we never I did. I really and... fancied that game. So, grab that. Cabala's Big Game Hunter, because there was a period for three months I worked on a Christmas tree farm. It was quiet throughout the rest of the year. Uh, my friend's dad owned it. And when we were there, my friend was just banging into this game. So, in, on Xbox, I think. And I'm hoping you can use it with a light gun, because, um, I mean, I'm an animal lover, but I don't know. It just seems like a bit of a weird one, so. 
<laughs> then Dino Stalker, which is a Capcom light gun game. We've got all the light guns out and a CRT. This is happening. It can't not be crap, quite frankly. Uh, Blowout, which I don't think is a uh, sort of game of the John Travolta film, but one pound fifty. What could go wrong? Everything. Uh, one pound fifty again. A game I've seen in a few places, but never played it. And I've got the Xbox set up, and I've got one of those Nyko Air Pads. Oh, that's right. Um, so Jaeger, uh, this had a sequel uh, called Meister. No, I did not. <laughs> it didn't. No, it didn't. Um, Shell Shock on the Saturn because I'm trying to build up my Saturn collection. Um, again, it's all kind of set up at the moment. And I am loving the Saturn. Yeah. So Shell Shock, boom, a few quid. And to end on it, uh, the uh, Earth Defense Force, which I played on the 360 with my friend Chris, who we always play local co-op games together, and this is supposed to be awesome. So. Grab that for us as well on the PS4. Eight quid, boom. Right, I'm done. Down to you. So, we went to, uh, I can never remember the name, Entertainment Zone. Yes. The Entertainment Zone in <coughs> Bridgewater. And it's basically like a massive shop dedicated to um, vintage toys, isn't it? Um, DVDs, VHS, um, I saw Boglins there, Star Wars. Thunderbirds, and I noticed the last time we went there, the last couple of times we've had all the Thunder, like Tracy's Island and stuff, they've got the massive box, pristine mm. condition, up on top of a shelf. Now it hasn't been sold, so where they're probably quite pricey because some of the prices are yeah okay, and so, uh, depending on what you want. It's it's kind of like a lot of those sort of stores where there's you go in and you know when you go into a, there's a place in Cardiff called Divine Records, which is a record store, and it's just packed. And you know when you go into these places that have they kind of I don't want to say so junk shops, like almost like a flea markety sort of thing, and they're so full that you could easily be missing stuff. But they can't cope. They can't. They obviously it's can't just, cope with the amount of stuff in there now. It's quite a large store as well. Yeah. Like, and it's got um, no, it hasn't got a basement, but it spans out to the the it back upstairs and round and the back, upstairs, and there's still yeah. it's just full of stuff. Which is good, but you obviously are, like you say, missing out on things, and, and uh, when she's trying to give me a bag, she was climbing through stuff. Yeah, it's just heaving in there. It, so anyway, Eagle I, did, I, I did rummage, and I found something, and I saw the little label T, and I thought, oh, I wonder if this is a golf thing, because you love golf. I do love And golf. I just thought, that'd be perfect for you. But then I saw like the 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 wire, and I saw like the little um, output and input um, red. They go to the TV. <laughs> red and yellow um, cables. Mhm. Mm yellow and white. So I saw the yellow and white um, cables are going to the back of the TV. What are they called? RF cables. Wavy cables. So I saw the yellow and white and red. Um, yellow RF and red. cables. No, red. Just, just yellow. Well, yellow and red then. <laughs> yellow, yellow and white. <laughs> the yellow and white AV cable. Well, so, so the yellow and white RV cables. AV cables. <laughs> I got some papers. Um, I wish I hadn't found this for you now. You <laughs> <laughs> just nothing um, but hassle. Yeah, so I dug deeper, and there was a lot of wires, and I dug through, and I found this in pristine condition. So if you're a fan of golf, this is made by Radica Games Limited uh, from 2005. 2005. So what's that? Thir no. 14 years ago. I can't do math. Um, math. <laughs> um, yeah, how cool is this? Um, this is Golden Golden Tea Golf Home Edition. So for all you uh, arcade, um, arcade, golf, arcade lovers. golf lovers, yes, you would love this. It's essentially yes. a home version of the Golden T97, you know, with a trackball that you... But it's amazing, it's pristine and we picked it up at work, but they did say they test everything. Um, and it's pristine. It's a lovely and condition. It is fun as well. The little sticker on the front is um, <sighs> really nice condition. And yeah, so we had a good deal on that because. Yeah. I'm we gonna, need... After this video, I'm going to play that. Yeah, it, you thank me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the, the last but not least. The thing creme de la creme that the. That I really found, first of all, when we got to Bridgewater, because we went straight to the entertainment zone, met our friends. Went back ten to minutes on before we went to the arcade because um, I think the guy was ill, wasn't he? With yeah, he, they said they were going to close soon. So we were and originally going to go to the entertainment zone, kind of go back in a few hours, but 
his wife was running it, I think, and she said, look, we're going to close soon because my husband's not well. So we ended up just going back in, doing a bit of a dash. And... So this is basically from, I think, 1994 by Aura Games. And it's a gaming accessory. And I've thrown all the games on the floor. That was interesting. Because they're rubbish anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, this is advertised uh, for the PlayStation, Sega... I guess Sega Saturn, Nintendo like you, you could just show them, you're keeping them in... PC, no, I'll keep them in suspense. <laughs> <laughs> but it was... Okay, let me show you. It's the, the Sega Interactor. So this is the Sega Interactor Virtual Reality Games Way. And I think it was advertised as, like, Virtual Reality Way. And, um... Basically, it was meant to help you become more involved with the game, so obviously they released this gadget. I like the way they say factory sealed, like it's a bonus when everything is sealed. Should be factory sealed it. anyway, should you buy, buy it brand new. But it's basically a little backpack and a little handheld um, controller. But basically, it's meant to kind of immerse you into the game and make you feel like you're there. And so basically with every punch or kick or slap <laughs> um i guess you feel like a buzz or it reacts that way doesn't yeah, that's it when you drink six pints i looked into this and it's essentially a subwoofer so what it reacts yeah. to is like the low frequencies so you can it says so you can plug it into anything with a, with an auxiliary um, sound socket it's so, a vibration isn't it so yeah yeah it's made by the beach boys um uh, so yeah you plug it in the backpack and obviously in the game as as the as the sound gets louder this vibrates more i wouldn't describe it as visual reality um, but I don't get why they said that, but again, it's the immersion side of it, isn't yeah. it? They think you, they say you're in the game. But the thing is, this is what ninety four. So this is pre Rumble Packs on the N sixty four, which I think was the first one to have a Rumble Pack. Um, so this is actually, it's one of those things that when I went online and looked it up because I've kind of heard about it but never seen it. Yeah. So I get the glare off the box. There we go. Um, but when I actually looked at it, it got pretty good reviews. It wasn't like you know tat that you find like the Rolling Rock or something which doesn't work. This actually got good reviews, and we haven't tried it yet because we only just really come yeah. back from Bridgewater. But I mean, it it sounded awesome, and that's why I had to pick it up. And I think it was sealed as well because when we opened it up, everything seemed yeah. really. And but it was like twenty pound, wasn't it, for the whole lot? And yeah. when we opened it, up, like we haven't really rooted around it yet, but everything was still in polythene bags, and um, the cables were tied up, and all the instruct like about four things of instructions in there, so. It was Basically, like it someone, looks like a nightmare to set up. As so well. someone has obviously thought, ah, I can't be bothered. This, this is cool. Back in the day, I'm not bothering with that. Like, <laughs> That's going straight as the attic. It looks like it's a Christmas present, and it was meant to be. <laughs> yeah, the kids are like, oh, I don't think I can plug this into my Game Gear, man. Yeah. Yeah, but again, really cool to have. Um, and for twenty quid as well, That's a bargain. Yeah, and it'd be really cool to like. Um, See it then. It'd be really cool to own quite a lot of the accessories for like things like the Mega Drive and the SNES and um, various consoles. Like we've got the Menacer and various other things, haven't we? And we've got mm. quite a lot of the cheetah joysticks and... Oh, um, the, uh, they're called characteristics, they're called. Yeah, they? I think that's my favourite thing to pick up is like the... Funky gadgets and like systems you don't normally see. Yeah. But yeah, so that's basically it. That's all we picked yeah. up really, isn't it? I just wanted to say as well before we kind of wrap it up that all the games we've got here, like Lollipop Chainsaw, uh, some of the Midas games and uh, Hybrid, Urban Chaos, uh, all Colony Wars, a lot of these games we haven't played either for like 20 plus years or we haven't come across which is why I kind of picked them up so it'd be really cool in the comics if anyone in the comments, sorry not comics if anyone has played <laughs> them just to say their experience comic. with them or what they're like or if they're little hidden gems and stuff that'd be really cool because what we're going to try and do now is one weekend put a day aside and just have a whole day of tucking into all this yeah and also we need to do a little video on uh, alone on the interactive virtual reality game system <laughs> the, the, the interactive virtual reality game system well on it it advertises serious vbh thrown again but, but did you when we when we couldn't get a taxi and we came home did you carry it or did i well, I would have carried it, but you were like, oh no, I look cooler with it. <laughs> I, I look cool with interactor, yeah, in case we bump across any girls. Oh my god, he's got an interactor. I would have carried it, and, you know. Yeah, you should definitely visit uh, Bridgewater and <laughs> Time Warp Arcade. It is amazing. And, yeah, nice old day out, wasn't it? Good weather as well. And a couple of cool places to eat, and there's obviously a spoons. That Golden Tea Golf game is amazing. You're welcome.
Oh, by the way, before we end this, apparently in Golden T97 in the arcade, in one of the versions, if you go off the fairways, off the, where you're not supposed to be on the track, there's really like weird gory things off to the sides, or so I was told. So, we'll have to delve deep. It just means I'll have to buy a Golden T full size arcade machine to find out. <sighs> oh, damn. Okay. So, yeah, we'll uh, see you at the Bridgewater video next, or the interactive video. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed, yeah. and yeah. Huh? See you soon. Bye bye.